Any can other I, questions, everybody in? Yeah. Can Clay hear me? Clay? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Clay, I uh, I was reading your thing about when you, uh, you did your love, yellow letter. That really inspired me, man. Good. When you got that first phone call, I'm like, let me let me get to this. Trying to get that lady to sign a contract today. That's yep. awesome. Yeah, that I've gotten awesome. uh, I had four more over the weekend. Uh, two look really good. So I'm uh, sent out 150 letters so far and probably have eight solid leads. So really happy with with it uh, so far. Yeah. I was waiting for Whitney to give me the same reply she gave you. It's about time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it is about time. Yeah. Um, I understand a lot of people have hesitation about the letters because it's a it's an expense. But I mean, hot dog clay is a perfect testimony that those silly little things work. It's great. They do. Yeah, and the uh, the level of uh, specification. So, like when you suggested to put the person's actual address in there, that works. Like last night, I was talking to a person on the line, and they said. Um, why do you want to buy this house at this address? They were literally reading off of the, the letter that I sent them. So it makes a difference to to be very specific about it. They think that, you know, I'm I'm driving around their neighborhood, literally writing down everybody's address, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been really good. So I'm going to keep doing it. And one thing that Clay and I learned is um, he, he was having a little bit of friction when people called back. How did you yeah. know? What is this? Blah, blah, blah. And we came up with two different, you know, scripts or whatever to say, oh, Clay, why don't you tell him? What are you saying? So that's so funny, Whitney, you said that because I used it the very next day after we talked about it. So nice plug to you and your coaching, I mean, for sure. But so we decided to say something like, hey, my wife and I were driving around your neighborhood this past weekend. Uh, kids in the car, it was crazy. I just jotted down a few addresses and threw a letter in the mail. Thanks for getting it. Look forward to Let me, um, and so I was having trouble with two things. One person was like, how did you get my information? And then two, it was a call out of the blue and I still work full time. And so I try to take some calls if I'm not in a meeting, but then most of the time it's just, you know, walking here to there, I, I see a call come in and I want to take it. I, uh, I I learned to diffuse that or kind of neutralize the weird conversation about somebody wanting to know how I got their information. Uh, and so I just said literally, hey, we were driving through the neighborhood, wrote down some addresses. Thanks for, um, thanks for calling me. And then I either say, if I have time, I say, hey, let me, uh, let me sit down here and, and make a few notes. Or I say, I don't have time right now. But I wanted to take your call because I appreciate you calling me back. Let me call you when I have my folder and I can uh, get back to to my notepad that I took all those notes on when I was driving around so that I can uh, make sure I, I, I know exactly what we're talking about here. So anyway, I, I talked to this guy who called me while I was looking at another house. <laughs> and so I was walking through this other house at like 530 in the afternoon and he calls me and says, um, Hey, I just got your letter. I want to sell my house. Can we talk about it? And and so I thanked him and then quickly called back 10 minutes later and then and then did the same thing. Hey, I'm in my truck. I don't have my folder with me, but I want to write down your information. So I just took, you know, I don't know, five minutes worth of notes with him and then um, and then have followed up with him since. So we're working to get to a contract soon on that guy. But yeah, it was good. Good coaching from Whitney for sure. One thing is, too, that, you know, they're calling you out of the blue. And so that's what Clay is saying is, hold on, I, I wasn't prepared for your call. Let me see if I can find my paperwork. Oh, well, I don't have yeah. it. Let me just ask you some questions. And then you can start on the lead sheet. That way you don't have to pretend that you know because you probably don't have a clue. Um, and another thing that you could say is, you know, sometimes they call and they're like, well, why'd you pick my house? Well, you know, or they'll, t they'll say, they're almost like quizzing you. Well, like, tell me about my house. If you were there, tell me about it. And you can say, well, you know, my wife and kids were with me. And honestly, my daughter threw up in front of one. And I don't remember if that was your house or somebody else's. But if you'll give me a second, I can ask you some questions. And I can go back and actually, yeah. you know, look at it or work through it. And so that, like I, he said, it diffuses them. And it buys you some time. If you, if you just say, hey, I want to take your call. 
let me call you back in a few minutes once I get my paperwork, then you can go find out where the property is and figure out whether you plausibly could have driven past it or not. Um, I talked to one lady last night who was really nice, but the reality was she lives on a backwood country road um, and I would not have driven past her house. And so we had a frank conversation about the fact that I'm interested in that zip code and, and that's how I did. I'm like, look, I'll just be honest with you. I haven't been by your property, but I'm interested in the zip code and I, I want to make, you know, I want to make an offer. She wants to sell it and she knows it's kind of a weird, weird property. Um, but I did go on Zillow and figure out what the comps are on that neighborhood and what the property looks like. I did the bird's eye view and we actually talked about the property while I was looking at it on bird's eye view. And so I asked her about lot lines and the neighbors and she used to live down the street. And so, um, we turned it into a decent conversation, even though, you know, I didn't know anything about our property to begin with. And that, that's a good point. I don't want to encourage you to lie to them and say, yeah, I definitely drove by your house. But the fact is you were probably driving around looking at houses last week anyway. And that's where there's a difference in line and advertising. Those Wendy's hamburgers never look in real life like they do on the commercials, but they're pretty darn close, right? And technically you were driving around looking at houses. Maybe you were in that zip code, maybe you're in another one, but maybe your daughter did throw up in the back seat. Maybe you were with your wife and y'all were arguing and you were trying to look at houses and like all of that could be true. It just wasn't completely true about their specific house. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want you to lie. There's a difference in lying and advertising and saying that you were looking at houses in this area and saying, I looked at your house. Now, Paul has a house that he drives by twice a day in his neighborhood. He's drooling over this house. And so when he says, I drive by your house twice a day, I want it. That's true. He does. But just like Clay said, if there's no way you drove by, just tell him. I didn't drive by. I was in the area, and yours popped up on uh, option. You know, does that make sense? Whoa! I almost closed. Just good point. Awesome job, Clay. I can't wait to hear Thanks. about it this afternoon. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, Glenn, do you have any other questions? Though that was good. Oh no, it's just been very inspiring. It's, it's you know, it lights a fire on you. It's good to hear stories like that. Yeah. yeah. But in, in full disclosure, Whitney's uh, still waiting for me. It's about time uh, in terms of uh, my buttons and bandit signs. So I'm uh, I'm on it in gr <laughs> with regards to letters, but there's some other things that I haven't embraced yet. And I uh, I got on my list. So uh, truth be told, I I don't have the full package going yet. Well, I want to speak on that because I did a video on this last night, okay? If, if yellow letters work, then do it. Wear them out, all right? Christina got her owner finance deal from a Facebook post. So if Facebook posts are working for you, do them. Wear them out. If bandit signs are working, do it. Wear it out. If Craigslist works, I mean, that's why I give you the buttons, the Facebook, Craigslist. I give you six different options plus driving for dollars. There's seven different options that you can use and you can do all seven and you can just be swamped or you can do one or two and figure out which ones you like and just keep doing those. But you have to do something and you have to do it consistently and it's going to be boring and it's going to be a little bit monotonous and you're going to kind of hate it but it's going to work if you keep doing it. Or maybe you find out that this one just is not working. I'm not even going to do that. Whenever she talks about that, I'm not going to listen to her. But when she talks about this, I'm going to do that. All of it together makes one huge storm, but you can take little pieces of it, but you have to keep doing it. That's what I meant on the video I did last night. <laughs> You don't need, out of the seven ways that you all have to get leads, you don't need 15 more ways to do it. You need to give each one of them time to see how you like it, if you can work it, and then pour more attention into that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and if something is just not working, like if Facebook is not working for you, go back. There's, there's a seven day challenge. There's seven different things that you can do on Facebook. There's a video that has 12 posts every real estate investor needs in it. There's 12, 12 different, or do y'all see me backwards? Is that 12 or is this 12? There's 12 different templates pictures, examples, words that you can use. That's 12 days of different content that you can be putting up. You can put it on your personal page or you can put it in those Facebook groups. Holy Pete. When I put something up in a fa Facebook group, I am swamped. It's like an immediate return on investment. Didn't cost anything to put it up there and I am swamped from putting stuff up in the Facebook groups. It works. You just have to keep doing it and be ready to accept whatever comes <laughs> and then decide if you want it or not. All right. We've gone a little bit over everybody. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Good. If you have any other questions, does anybody have any right now that you can think of? <laughs>